is not easy. It's really hard. It was early one springtime when Richard Lutro set out in search of a cure for what tortured him. The whole thing's bigger than I am. It's hard for me to understand it sometimes myself. Years ago, he swore he would never go back to that place. He had seen too much killing, too many horrors, all that suffering reflected in that one small image. But now, here he was, on his way to Vietnam, drawn by a photo no bigger than a postage stamp, and like a live thing, it had made its way from a dead man to a dusty trail in Vietnam, to an American GI, a war memorial, to a book, to a wallet, to this bag, on its way home. This the flight I've been looking for, huh? To present the picture to that little girl, the daughter of the man he killed. Will he even know her? He's no teenage grunt, and she must be, well, 40 or so. It's the smell that hits him first. Every memory has one. Normandy, Vietnam, Iraq. The day before he is to meet the girl, now woman in the photo, Rich is almost beyond nervous. I'd almost rather face combat again than face this girl. It's a cloudy Wednesday morning in the north. Rain is threatening as Rich boards a van for the two and a half hour drive to Lons Village. A drive through a world changing fast but still utterly different. Past markets crowded with faces amazed to see this entourage, this white haired man. The village draws closer. In the van, he fidgets, hedgy. Yeah, I have to bring flowers. <laughs> and then suddenly Rich and Carol are here, walking. Here is where that somber, serious soldier lived, had his children, the place to which he never returned. How are you feeling? Nervous. And then, just around a stone wall, Rich sees a woman and is sure. I've already seen her. I know who she is. <clears throat> he takes a moment to compose himself, then walks toward her. <sighs> and here they are. They had never laid eyes on each other before. Ciao, Sheila. For a few seconds, they don't know what to say. They're intimate strangers. He recites a sentence he has learned in Vietnamese. Today, he says, I return the photo of you and your father, which I have kept for 33 years. Please forgive me. Finally, it all comes pouring out. This terrible, painful release. As if right now, at this moment, she is finally able to give in to grief and cry for the father she never really knew. She clutches Rich as if he were her father himself, finally coming home from the war. Her brother tells us that both of them believe that their father's spirit lives on in Rich. They expect we'll think it's just superstition, and perhaps they say it is. But for them, today is the day their father's spirit has come back to them. She has a new father the whole village has turned out to see the photo return. Once, Rich had wondered about formality, ceremony, but not now. Tell her this is the, the photo that I took from her father's wallet today that I shot and killed, and that I'm returning. She is 40 years old, and it's the first time she has held the photo of herself and her father in her hands. <laughs> and in this moment, and during the afternoon that followed, he died a brave man and a courageous warrior. In the company of former enemies, Rich Luttrell felt die. as if his wounded soul had been stitched up and made new again. I'm so sorry. At which point we could almost imagine some Hollywood director shouting, Cut! Print! Except, of course, 
life isn't quite like that. And in the chapter that follows, you'll see why. Coming up, a new generation, back from a new war, and haunted just like Rich. You've killed a man. You start to think, did this guy have a three-year-old daughter back home? Um, did he have a wife? Who will help heal their wounds? When Coming Home continues...